stories from comics and cartoons have come to life in film. This would not be possible without green screen. Special effect crews were able to create the fictional world, superhero suits, and powers we see. We, as the audience, are able to see this story unfold. But it is very different for the actors. In the studio, actors must use their imagination because it is not real, and designers add the effects in later. Sometimes people live green screen lives. We pretend life is a certain way and do our best to keep up with this facade. It appears to people on the outside things are great, but inside life is a struggle and we are only acting. Sometimes believers do this as well with our Christian walk. In the Bible, there are seven sons of Sceva who pretend they have the ability they do not have. This can serve as a lesson to the believers. In Acts chapter 19, verses 1 through 12, it says, God gave Paul the power to perform unusual miracles. When handkerchiefs or aprons that had merely touched the skin were placed on six people, they were healed of their diseases, and evil spirits were expelled. A group of Jews were traveling from town to town casting out evil spirits. They tried to use the name of the Lord Jesus in their incantation. No. <laughs> Say, I command you in the name of Jesus, whom Paul preaches, to come out. S uh, seven sons of Sceva, a leading priest, were doing this. But one time when they tried, to, tried it, the evil spirit replied, I know Jesus, and I know Paul. But who are you? And the man with the evil spirit leaped at them, overpowered them, and attacked them with such violence that they fled from the house naked and battered. The story of what happened spread quickly throughout Ephesus, to the Jews and the Greeks alike. A soul and fear descended on the city in the name of the Lord Jesus was greatly honored. Many who became believers confessed their sinful practices. A number of them who had been practicing sorcery brought their incantation books and burned them at the public fire. The uh, value of books was several million dollars, so the message about the Lord spread widely and had a powerful effect. Here are the three apps you can take away from the story. The first thing, the seven sons of Sceva liked the power they saw. It was cool, it was different, and they wanted to try it. Their father was the leading priest, so they were surrounded by people of faith. But the problem was that they did not have a real relationship with God themselves. Instead, they tried to fake their relationship with God and tried to use power. They cannot use their father's faith. The same applies to us today. You cannot overcome trials and hardship by relying on our parents' faith and our court officers' faith. We must have our own faith and our own relationship with Jesus. The, the demon said, I know Jesus and I know Paul, but who are you? What if today we face our trials and hurt? I know Jesus and I know Captain James, but who are you? We cannot fake our faith. We must have a real relationship with God, and if we do not, we won't be able to handle the attacks of the enemy. And we might end up battered like the seven sons of Sceva. Amen. The second is fools. The seven sons of Sceva fooled themselves into believing they could cast out demons and heal people too. They saw their father at work in the synagogue, synagogue and heard Paul was healing people in unusual ways. They thought they understood the process and knew the methods. The problem was they saw the methods and thought they were the key to success. Jesus used interesting methods to heal people. He often used mud, spit, and water to heal them. In Mark 7, verses 32-36, it says, Jesus led them away from the crowd so they could be alone. He put his fingers into the man's ear. Then spitting on his own fingers, he touched the man's tongue. Looking up to heaven, he sighed and said, which means, be open. Instantly, the man could hear perfectly, and his tongue was free so he could speak plainly. Jesus told the crowd not to tell anyone. But the more he told them not to, the more they spread the news. Mark 7, verse 3 through 30. At the courts, we are not lining up for the course officers to heal us with spit and mud like Jesus did. We are not looking for the course officer to use a handkerchief like Paul did. We understand the methods, and they don't have power in themselves. The agent of healing was not the mud, the spit, the water, or the methods. The miracle happened by the power of God working through the faith of the believers. We tend to focus on methods rather than our deep hope, procedures rather than relationships, techniques rather than understanding. We look for the curriculum that will motivate all students, the system that will ensure discipline and order, a Bible program that will lead all students to love the Lord. The methods do not hold the power. God does. Sometimes we're so caught up with the methods in church that we forget God is the answer. Oh, no. <laughs> the third F is failure. If we do not have a real relationship with God, we will fail. Our failure will not have anything to do with God's power and ability to provide. At the end of the story, the seven sons of Sceva failed because they were pretending. 
God still got the glory. God will always get the glory, either though, either through you or in spite of you. The story of what happened spread quickly through all Ephesus, to Jews and Greeks alike. A solemn period of saying on the city in the name of the Lord Jesus was greatly honored. Many who became believers confessed their simple practices. A number of them who oh, I already read this. Either you uh, you will partner with God, like Paul, in great things and do great things with them, or uh, or I love sure. Or his power will overcome you and you will fail in the name of him. Either way, God will always get the glory. Choose God and watch out what you can do. When we go through life trying to keep up with appearances with a green screen, our faith, we see ourselves settling up for failure. As a believer, life is not easy. It is impossible for everything to be going great all the time. But during the trials and tribulations, you learn to trust God. When he makes a way where there wasn't a way, and you can see what you can really do. It strengthens your faith, and you will turn to him always. And never, and you will learn to create a real relationship with him. Then, you only, only then will you be prepared for life. In conclusion, this story is a great reminder of the authentic relationship believers should have with God. You cannot access the amazing things God has done for his people without a real relationship with him. It is important to be honest where you are in life. In fact, it can be dangerous to pretend. It can be exhausting keeping up appearances and trying to be something you are not. God created you and would like you to do something amazing with your life. Choose God and do not regret it. Amen. Good job, guys. That was nice, though, the message.